Hello YouTube. Today we're going to be going over our Terror Flack pet build called Snack Attack. This is going to be a little bit more of a bossing build than a mobbing build, and we'll kind of go into why here in a second while we go over the build. And with that, let's go ahead and go into the build. So first off, we are using the Face Puncher, specifically for the melee attacks, I have a 25% chance to apply Terror to your Self Anoint. And we're using that over the action skill and anoint because we're going to be using Gamma Burst. It's a pet-centric build, which has a longer duration, meaning you're not really spamming up that action skill in terror. So the melee attacks having the terror chance with the face puncher is going to stack a little bit better for us. The next big thing is going to be the execute, which is here for debuffing, so you can have your pet do a little bit more damage. I threw the Free Radical on here with the U-Rad Anoint, which is under 50% health, 100% bonus radiation damage. And that's basically just going to be our fight for, life, fight for your life gun. One of the biggest components of this, other than the Face Puncher, is our shield. We're going to be using the After Using Attack Command, Consume All Terror, and Flax Pet gains 200% incendiary damage for a short time. So basically, we're going to throw Gamma Burst out, stack up our Terror, use the Execute and debuff, and then attack Command and just get a bunch of extra incendiary damage on our Command. I have the Mitosis Hunter Seeker on here, both for cooldown, and also because why well, I have the Guardian on here. While we are mobbing, instead of using the Attack Command, like we'll be using for bossing, I like to stack up the terror and then use the increased damage and fire rate terror anoint on the grenade and the hunter seeker does gun damage so we're going to increase our damage use the guardian to get increased damage from our hunter seeker shooting and just throw out hunter seekers to help out our pet do damage while we're just in the mobbing areas we're using Red Fang for mobbing, and we're going to be using Deadeye for bossing. The biggest reason we're using Deadeye here is because while they're above 75% health, enemies are going to take extra damage. And so we're just going to be trying to get as much damage as quickly as possible with our pet using the attack command. And this just really helps stack that damage up all at once. The... Um, Relic here can kind of be changed out a little bit. I really like to just keep the Knife Drain White Elephant on, just because that gives you some extra health and survivability to keep you up longer while you're using the Face Puncher, since it is melee damage that works with Knife Drain. So that just gets you extra health in there, allows you to just stay up a little bit longer and not go down as often. Uh, because, like I said, this isn't really a great mobbing build. Um, outside of that, I've just thrown a couple extra things on here. Um, I do have a few different elements in the Faulty Star. Specifically, we you are using the Faulty Star because of this trigger and Nova. So basically, any time our pet is out there getting attacked, since our pet has our shield equipped, they'll be giving a Nova because they're being attacked. So that's just extra damage just for the pet being out there existing, which just works so wonderfully for a Red Fang pet-centric build. So, of course, with that, we wanted to have a few different elements so that whenever we're in certain areas, they'll be taking that preferred damage. I did throw in a couple other things if you just want to kind of have fun testing out what you like better. The messy breakup with... The Guardian is a lot of fun. If you want to run a pure radiation build, since we're using Gamma Burst, of course using that red suit is a lot of fun. And of course we've got a couple of different Hunter Seekers on here. Again, just for that different element range. So going over all of that, let's go ahead and get into the build for the skills. So we are going to be using the Warloader bot because of its attack command. So while it has the attack command issued, it does a barrage of missiles at the target, meaning it just has a larger range. 
and the Warloader bot has one of the best attack commands out of all of the bots. Now the downside of both the Warloader bot and of course this particular tree, there are a lot of bugs in Flax Purple Tree, and the fire rate passive that the Warloader gives is bugged and it is not currently actually working. So unfortunately we don't get that extra fire rate passive on the Warloader bot, but we're mainly just using it for that attack command. So we've got 5 out of 5 and gotta go fast, gives us extra pet damage, extra movement. We've got success imminent, and this is just basically to stack up that Nova that we're already getting. So anytime that shield breaks, or anytime that shield is filled, we're going to be doing a Nova. So we've just got more Novas on there to just do extra passive damage as we're fighting. We've got 5 out of 5 in agility training. That's going to give the pet increased reload speed and of course give ourselves increased reload speed. We've got 3 out of 3 in Throat Ripper, which is just going to give our pet extra chance for critical hits. We've got 1 in Take This so that we can take advantage of the Faulty Star with our pet taking the shield. We've got 5 out of 5 in Monkey Do, and this is Flax Pet Gains Increased Critical Damage. And one of our Flax Pet scores a critical hit, Flax Next Shot deals bonus damage. So, because we're just using Pet a lot, it's nice to just have that extra damage going. We went 2 out of 5 and not even a challenge. This is basically just to give us a little bit longer duration and a little bit more cooldown whenever our duration is over. We've got 1 out of 5 in Fuzzy Math. Whenever Flax or their pet scores a critical hit, a portion of Flax and their pet shields are restored. So that just kind of helps with success imminent and just getting extra Novas going off, getting that increase in the field as quickly as we can, so we get more Novas off of success imminent. In our Master Tree, we've got 5 out of 5 in Ferocity, that's just giving us extra pet damage. We've got 5 out of 5 and Go for the Eyes. More of that crit damage. We've got 5 out of 5 and Frenzy, which is going to be giving us more pet damage. We've got 3 out of 3 in He Bites, which is giving us some extra damage reflection. You don't really need to have 3 out of 3. I did not reset it um, recently. I would suggest taking two points out of that, and you can kind of go a few different places. What I would suggest doing is putting two more in Rage and Recover, just to give you a little bit more health regeneration after you're getting a kill. And the pet does get kills quite quickly, even in those mobbing areas, even if it's not the strongest point of the build. We've got one out of five in Who Rescued Who, just for more of that health regeneration. We've got one out of one in Psycho Head, which is going to give us more pet damage and more movement speed, which is kind of a down part of the Warloader bot. It's not exactly the fastest pet out there. We've got three out of three in Hive Mind, which is basically just going to be sharing a little bit of the damage in between um, Flack and Pet, and makes Pet deal more damage. And then we've got 3 out of 3 impacts tactics, which is going to increase our pet and flak damage. And of course, it also increases the maximum health. We didn't go anything in Hunter Tree, and that is mainly just because we're not doing any damage with flak. We did go ahead and go down in Stalker Tree. Um, originally, we didn't go this far down in Stalker Tree, but with those extra 7 points from the 72 level cap, we went ahead and put some of those points down here in the bottom of Stalker Tree. So we've got 3 out of 3 in Sikkim. It lowers the attack command cooldown. We've got 5 out of 5 in Ferocious Attack, which is increasing our pet damage mainly, but it does kind of give us a little bit extra for our face puncher. 5 out of 5 in Eager to Impress. It's basically just more cooldown, to have your gamma up more, get more radiation damage. 1 out of 3 in all my BFFs, just to give us a little bit of health regeneration and our pet a little bit of health regeneration. Lick the Wounds, pretty standard on all flak builds. Allows your pet to get you up if you get downed. We've got 2 out of 5 in Hidden Machine, 
because we're using Red Fang in the mobbing portions, just went ahead and took two points here just to give us a little bit extra damage when we are having our pet kill things, and we do just a little bit more to help out. Three out of three in Fast and the Furious, that's going to increase the gun damage, but it's mainly there for increasing that pet damage. And then one out of five in Rage and Recover, we get extra health regeneration for both ourselves and the pet. And like I said, I would take two points out of um, he bites and put those points here in Rage and Recover. So you have a decent amount more percentage of health from getting your kill skills. Now with all of that, guys, let's go ahead and get into uh, Wotan and kind of show you what a boss fight looks like. Alright guys, and that was the Wotan kill. So as you can see, there are a couple places there. If you get the bot a little too close, the attack command doesn't like to trigger. There are still a few known issues with the bots and their AI. So that is going to be something you should be aware of in using the bots. Um, other than that, I hope you enjoyed the build. I had a lot of fun updating this build. I haven't used it for about a year, so it was one that I was looking forward to updating after that 72 increase. Let me know what you guys thought, and don't forget to give a like and a subscribe, comment down below. With that, I've been your local sassy Swinlaw. Stay classy, Pandora.